Welcome to Americana Archives. Today's headline is an adventure on a locomotive. It says, one night, about four years ago, and just about this month, the engineer continued, I was coming down this hill with, considering the season, a pretty heavy train. At Wilkesbury, over in the valley, which you'll soon see, a young lady had got aboard of my engine. She wanted a night ride and was put on by the superintendent. She was a perfect lady, and her mother was in one of the cars back. To tell the truth, as I have often said to my wife, I never saw a more beautiful or game-looking girl. She was very small-sized, dressed in what my wife calls complete taste, and her figure was so good, and her hands so small, and her ways so frank and artless, that I almost wished she was my daughter. Her face, though, was what I can't give you an idea of. It was the most beautiful face I ever saw. It had, proceeded the engineer warming, all the intelligence of a woman's and the simplicity of a child's. And she was so sprightly and lovable altogether and asked so many questions that although I had never had a woman on the engine but once before, I invited her over here to my seat and explained to her all about how a locomotive is run. I showed her how to manipulate the lever, which emits more or less steam to the cylinders, how the reverse lever is worked, how the tests of water and steam are made, I showed her how to blow the whistle and ring the bell, and explained how the brakes were blown down, and how warnings were given on the approach to crossings. She took it all in, and, said the engineer, stretching his arm across the boiler and clutching my sleeve. It was the best lesson I ever gave. Right up around yonder, about two miles from here, just as I was handling the reverse lever, we struck a stone or something on the track at nine o'clock at night. I was a-bending down at the time. The girl was sitting where you are, on my cushion, and quicker than lightning, the lever flew back and struck me in the eye and knocked me, well, I don't know where. Anyway, it didn't make much difference for a minute or two, for I was just stunned. As we were on the downgrade, with no need of fuel, the fireman was back in the baggage car, and when I came to, this young girl was holding on to my head and fanning me with her toy of a hat. It wasn't two seconds before I knew what was to pay. The engine and the whole train had started down this hill at the rate of 60 miles an hour. I tried to spring up and reach the lever. My right arm and side and right leg were numb. My face and even my tongue were so paralyzed by the blow I had received that I could hardly speak. I was so desperate that more to attract the girl's attention to the danger than anything else, I grabbed her hat with my left hand and threw it outside the locomotive and then managed to beckon her ear down close to my lips and say, Train's going too fast. We'll be in the ditch if you don't turn the lever. She understood me in an instant, and it was time. The engine was rocking, swaying, grinding, and scurrying down the track like a beast with great bounds. Every second, I expected it would leap the rails. It certainly was descending at the rate of 70 miles an hour. But that little thing sprang up here, clutched the lever, Motion which way she would shove or push it, got my nod, and reversed the wheels like a little man. Then she whistled down brakes. There was no need of that, for the boys had put on every brake already. Inside of a mile and a half, she stopped the train, and then she knelt down, all trembling and crying. And now, what do you think she said? I can't guess. Said she, Mister, I feel as if I should faint. Haven't you got some camphor or a little whiskey? And as sure as you live, she did faint right away there, right down in front of that firebox, right on top of me. The fireman and conductor came in and took her back to her mother, and the fireman had to run the train down to Whitehaven. This story originally came from the New York world. This story came from the great state of Missouri, being reported in the Iron County Register on March 30th, 1876. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to continue to uncover all of America's lost and forgotten history, then remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.